I'll let you hand it to me. Uh, so um, I know you come from a, a Georgia background. Um, I'm a University of Georgia grad too, so go dogs, yeah. Um, yeah, and I know you guys have had a, a lot of success recruiting in Georgia and stuff. How, how much of a, you know, a role do you, do you play in, in getting a lot of those guys down south? Um, so I've got the entire north part of Georgia, everything north of I-20, actually all the way down to Columbus. But um, uh, I've recruited North Georgia for a long time now, probably 20 years. And uh, Coach Ware also recruits the southeast part of Georgia. Um, it's been a great area for us just in terms of we feel like it's some of the best high school football in the country. Um, but also there's a lot of exposure to the Army there. There's you know Army bases down at Fort Benning in Columbus. There's Fort Stewart down in, in Savannah. Um, there's Fort Gordon in Augusta. So there's a lot of people and a lot of families that have experience with the military. Um, they've had cousins, they've had uncles, they've had parents that have been in the Army. So there's that level of patriotism that's really helped us, um, along with the fact that there's an importance placed on football um, in, in, in the South and in the state of Georgia. And we feel like the kids that come out of some of those programs that are used to competing at that high of a level um, are ready uh, for our culture. And they really fit in well. Uh, they're used to working hard at football, and, and uh, they've really helped us. It's a really competitive area. I know, uh, you know, Alabama gets in there. Clemson now is uh, oh, for sure. really yeah. Yeah. it's a dogfight in the yeah. SEC for to get kids from Atlanta for sure. Um, but it, it's definitely been an area that's helped us a lot. Um, love going down there to recruit. Um, I think that. You know, Coach Munkin's reputation in the state of Georgia certainly helps us a lot, you know, from his recruiting days from Georgia Southern, then uh, Georgia Tech when he was there, and then when we were at Georgia Southern, he was the head coach. So that certainly helps, as well as, you know, myself and Coach Ware, we've had recruiting areas in Georgia for a long time. So um, we try to do it the old-fashioned way and communicate with the coaches. Um, a, lot of, a lot of schools in recruiting don't really go through the head coaches anymore. It's kind of done online and, and you know they won't keep the, the head coaches in the loop. The head coaches in Georgia want to still be involved. And I think that probably helps us you know, a little bit that we communicate with them and, and um, they feel comfortable sending their kids here. So, okay, just going to ask about you're going down to Atlanta to play Georgia State this year. Is that helpful? Uh, is that set because of trying to be show the team there and some of your uh, seniors that are from the area? Yeah, I, I, I hope we play really well. I think a lot of guys will be really fired up to be there. Um, we've got a lot of kids from the Atlanta area and surrounding areas, and uh, I really think that that'll be a great opportunity for them and their families to see them and maybe people that normally can't come up to West Point, can't afford to come up here to make the trip to Atlanta. So hopefully we'll have just as many people there as, as they will. And uh, it, it's also very good for recruiting. I mean, obviously we can't invite recruits to the game, but um, they can go and um, – under the Georgia State, you know, tickets, and they can come see us play, and we hope that some of them may like what they see. So, Coach, what are you seeing from this year's offense? I know it's still early on in the process, and you're moving a lot of guys around, especially replacing some of those graduating seniors through camp, you know, through the spring camp and fall camp. What are the things that you're starting to see from this offense in terms of how they're built this year? Is it similar to last year? Or are you noticing some subtle differences here and there? Uh, I, I think we're very similar, um, starting with the quarterback position. You know, we have that continuity. It certainly helps us out a lot. Um, the thing I'm seeing right now is we, we have too many self-inflicted errors that we need to clean up. And we've had a lot of guys that have been uh, in and out of the lineup, you know, banged up, uh, nothing serious. But uh, so just piecing it all together, we're going to be real excited when we get a little more healthy and get all the pieces back together in there at the same time. Uh, we haven't had that, in a, you know, probably since the first couple of days of camp. Uh, so we'll be excited to see that. Um, but also, we think we have more, a lot more depth right now. And so as a result of people being banged up, we've been able to develop some of the younger guys. And, and that's been really key. Um, we can never have too much depth. This is, I, we really feel like this is the most depth across the board we've had. In our, it's our sixth season now here. And um, you know, particularly on the offensive line, we feel a lot better about it. At quarterback, we feel a lot better about it. Um, so those are that's important. Um, and you look at the wide receiver position. Uh, I was talking with Coach Edwards this morning. He's, he feels like he's got more guys that, that, than ever he's ever had since he's been here that can play for us. Um, so uh, we're not where we want to be in terms of execution. And um, you know, again, most of that is are, are things we can control, which we need to be the national champions of things we can control. Um, so we're a work in progress as far as that goes, but we're excited that a lot of kids are, are starting to progress, a lot of younger guys in, in particular. And Coach, on your offensive line, you've had uh, a couple of new players move in. You're, you're working on the, new, on the center position. You've got some size, especially the guard positions. Tell us about uh, how the offensive line is shaving up at this point. Sure. 
Uh, every year is different, you know, and, and uh, last year we had to place uh, replace four starters going into the season. So you really feel like, man, I, I mean, this is going to be a completely different year for us up front. And uh, with Bryce Holland was the only returning starter. And we had some guys really step up and, and, and play well. And that group really came together. Um, this year is different. Again, we lost Bryce, who was, you know, one of the most competitive um, and, and best leaders I've ever been around, one of, the, one of the most competitive players I've ever been around. And, and just during a game, the energy he brought and the passion rubbed off on not just the offensive line, but our entire offense and team. So you can't really replace a guy like that. Just like last year, we couldn't really replace Brett Toth. I mean, he may be once, once in a career here at, at, at West Point, you get an offensive lineman like Brett Toth. But we had guys step up in his, you know, uh, on his, in his absence. Uh, it was two or three guys, and so I think this year the sum of the parts has a chance to be just fine. Um, I think we've got like 45 starters starts. Excuse me, 45 starts returning. So guys that have started in 45 games, which is it's more than we've had. Um, and I was talking with Coach Tracy this morning, and we feel like we have more guys that have an opportunity that we can put in the game. Um, at times, you know, Bryce Holland played. Um, 900 snaps in a season. Almost never came. Never, he never missed a snap one season. Um, that's hard to do, and we feel like we want to spread the reps around. You know, uh, eight to ten guys this year, which is really going to help. So we're going to play guys in the first half. There were times where we didn't sub on the offensive line the whole entire game, and the same five guys played all 80 snaps. Um, that's not ideal, and so we're hoping this year that that we've got more depth and guys we can put in and we'll also have some guys that are interchangeable, especially in the guard box. We feel good about that. So Coach, you brought up obviously before just about the change in the passing game. You know, with Kelvin Hopkins coming back for a second year, some of those big wide receivers from last year step up. Just talk about what you're expecting from this passing game. Because obviously it was a big surprise last year with what they were able to accomplish. Just talk about the expectations, especially with that experience coming back. Sure. Well uh, most of our passing game, you know, comes from our ability to to run the football. And uh you know, when it, we're going to run the football until it becomes unfair. All right? and, when, and when it becomes unfair to us, we're going to find ways to throw it. And uh, so we haven't actually added new passes. Um, we may be in some formations that are a little bit different and have run schemes that are a little bit different and then always have a play action off of that. And so kind of the way our offense is set up, we have an inside play, and then we have an outside play that works off of it. We have a play action off of the outside play and a counter play. And that's that's – that's how we do it. And we start inside and work out, and then we go to the play action after that. And uh, it just so happens that Kelvin's really good at converting the play actions. And if it's an iffy situation, we're probably a lot more likely to call the play actions because we think he can he can convert it and uh, and he can execute it. And and so that's the situation where we, we probably turn a few more of those loose, but we don't go into a game just saying, man, we're going to throw it 30 times this week because that's just not who we are. That's not how we're built. So. And Coach, you've got, uh, as you said, you had to replace uh, three graduating uh, fullbacks, uh, and you've got some new players. Tell us a little bit about some of the key uh, players at the fullback and also at the slot back positions. Sure. Well, uh, first of all, Connor Slomka has always been kind of a short yardage guy, and that was his role, and he was either the fourth or the fifth guy some games. Um, but he converted for us. If you look at his yards per carry average, it's not, it's not very impressive. But a lot of those were third and one, fourth and one carries where he's just making sure he got the first down. Um, and he's got, he's got a lot of ability to run the football. And he's good at worming his way through. He's got really good feet. He's really powerful. Um, and he, we think he's durable. And so I, I, he's probably going to get you know, uh, his share of the carries. And then behind him, Sandon McCoy um, was a guy we used primarily without the football. And so this camp, we've been making sure that Connor gets reps without the ball because he, he hadn't done that much in his career. And Sandin's been getting the bulk of the carries in camp. Uh, so we can improve both of them and make them both more well-rounded. But we really feel like they kind of play well of each other. Um, and then our third guy is, is, is really still up for grabs, um, uh, Rashad Bolton. Um, has done a great job there, really improved. He's a very physical blocker. Um, and we've had some younger guys that have also been in the mix with him. Um, and we've had some, some injury pro you know, bugs at, at, at that position this, this preseason, but we, we should have everybody back by the time we get ready for the first game. So um, we're going to still have competition there, I think, in the, for the third and fourth spots. And then slot back, sorry. Um, you know, of course, Kel Walker's back. We feel really good about Kel, his ability on the perimeter. Um, he's also done a great job in camp as a as a receiver, 
and um, done, made some plays there. He's um, done a great job stepping into a leadership role, you know, and, and helping be a mentor to the younger kids. Um, you know, and that's something that's been really big for us. And then Artis Hobbs, we feel like, is a really complete player um, who has continued to get better. Solid blocker, um, really good pass receiver. Um, is good with the ball on the edge, on, on the pitch. And we're excited about him. Uh, A.J. Howard is a guy who's very much improved, who uh, Coach Waugh is really high on just his development. Um, just got to continue to work with him in terms of um, just understanding, you know, where he fits in the offense as far as, you know, assignment-wise. Um, and then Dom DeStefano, Dom DeStefano has um, really uh, been solid uh, this camp doing the ordinary average, you know, being in the right spot, you know, making the right adjustments, um, catching the pitch, catching the ball when it's thrown to him, doing a great job blocking, and we feel good about him. So uh, that, that, that group, even though it's a lot of new faces, um, has really come on in the last couple of weeks. So. Last two seasons, last year you only had five lost fumbles, pretty much just duplication of the year before. There's some wood around. <laughs> um, well, that's I mean that's one of our main goals. Um, we'd like to turn the ball over fewer times than we did last year. Uh, did we have eight? Is that right? Five. I think I mean we had five lost fumbles and three interceptions right. maybe. And uh, you know we had a tender team in the country that had fewer than us. Georgia Southern had five turnovers total, which was unbelievable. Um, and so our goal is to be better than we were last year in ball security. Um, we, we think eight's a pretty good number, but I mean, that's a great goal to set. I, we give our team a chance to win football games if we don't turn it over. And I, I don't think uh, our record when we have not turned the ball over here is, is pretty good. I think maybe we might have lost one game since we've been here in, in five years. And so that's something that we point out to our guys all the time. And, and you know, we're going to give West Point a chance to win if we just secure the ball. And sometimes, you know, the length of our games, uh, the other team may not get, but seven possessions on the other side. So there's fewer than that in the Oklahoma game. But um, and so if we can convert a couple times and then not give them good field position, and, you know, our defense will find a way to get off the field, and we got a chance to win. So we're excited about doing that again. Coach, does that start a uh, ball management between with the exchange from the center to the quarterback? Do you feel good about that? Yeah, for sure. And there was a time we had a lot of problems with that, and uh, it was, there was nothing more frustrating uh, than than not being able to get the play started. You know, and and um, you know, so we we did have those issues in the past. Um, we're really good with it last year. Um, you know, that's just a wasted play, right? Whether you recover the ball or not. You're going to lose it down pretty much when that happens. So that's something that we can we work on continuously. You'll see our guys we come to practice, you know, staying after practice, working on it, and they take it very seriously. And it's not just the center or just the quarterback. I mean, it's ownership from both both sides of it, uh, making sure that it gets done correctly. Anything else? Okay, thanks, coach.